Hello everyone, I'm Harry. Welcome back to King Kun Sun Classroom. Through the past five videos, we've uh, introduced the basic knowledge of uh, glyphosate formulations, especially glyphosate 41% SL. In the next few videos, we will more focus on the factors related to the glyphosate price trends. And that's a topic of great interest to many of our customers and end users. Uh, we all know that glyphosate was developed by Monsanto in 1970. Until 2020, the global pesticide market size is 60.8 billion US dollars, among which herbicides account for 40%, about uh, 24 billion US dollars. And the market size of glyphosate reaches 5.6 billion US dollars, accounting for 23% of the global herbicide share and accounting for 9.2% of the global pesticide share. So firstly, let's take a look at this price chart of glyphosate and we will take this to review the major events related to glyphosate supply over the past 30 years. After 1996, Monsanto successfully launched glyphosate-resistant GM crops such as soybean, cotton, rapeseed, corn, and others. The planting area of GM crops increased rapidly, and the usage amount of glyphosate also developed at the same time, and gradually established its status of the world's largest pesticide variety. In the year 2000, when Monsanto's glyphosate patents expired, China's glyphosate production capacity grew rapidly, and the global glyphosate entered a fast developing period of rapid growth in volume but declining on price. Uh, by January 2007, the price of glyphosate had fallen to uh, 26,000 RMB per ton. Then, in 2007 to 2008, glyphosate came into the largest peak period in its history and the price soared to 120,000 RMB per ton. Uh, during this period, three important factors drove the volume and price of glyphosate to rise. First, uh, from 2006 to 2008, Monsanto shut down 100,000 tons of glyphosate production lines, which accounted for half of Monsanto's total production capacity of 200,000 tons at that time. Second, global GM crop planting area continued to rise with a growth rate of 9.35% from 2005 to 2008, which greatly boosted the demand for glyphosate. Third, in 2007, the global grain price rose sharply, among which the global soybean price rose by 99% from July 2007 to March 2008, and the price of glyphosate, the largest pesticide variety, also rose in conjunction with the agricultural products. The above three factors have also greatly stimulated China's export demand for glyphosate. In 2006, China's glyphosate output was only 170,000 tons, of which 135,000 tons were exported. By 2008, China's glyphosate export demand grew to 240,000 tons. Uh, the fast-growing profit space has also stimulated the rapid expansion of China's glyphosate production capacity. In 2009, the domestic production capacity of glyphosate was expanded to 1 million tons, but the total global demand for glyphosate was only 800,000 tons in the same year. So it was severely over capacity. Coupled with the impact of the financial crisis, the price of glyphosate fell rapidly uh, to a trough of uh, uh, 19,000 RMB per ton in June 2010, uh, making it difficult for most manufacturers to achieve profitability. Uh, in 2012, China exported 350,000 tons of glyphosate, becoming the world's largest source of glyphosate supply. However, with a series of uh, pollution and industrial safety accidents in China's industrial uh, production, 
Glyphosate production enterprises have been restricted from starting production, which has become the last straw that crushes those small and medium-sized glyphosate factories. The industry experienced a two-year downturn, and the social inventory gradually consumed and started a steady upward trend that lasted for two years. Uh, by 2014, China's actual production reached 450,000 uh, tons, and Monsanto's production capacity was 240,000 tons, tons. In terms of demand, the global demand of glyphosate technical was only 500,000 tons to 550,000 tons, and the growth of global GM crop area began to uh, slow down. From 2013 to 2016, the compound growth rates of the global GM crop planting area fell to 0.87%. A combination of factors has caused the glyphosate price to re-enter the downward trend. From 2017 to 2020, China's chemical industry began to reform wastewater discharge uh, rectification and phosphorus industry rectification, uh, resulting in very little new production capacity growth. In addition, some outdated production capacity has withdrawn from the market, and the industry concentration has increased significantly. Plus, after the uh, start of the COVID epidemic in 2019, uh, international shipping prices continued to rise, crude oil prices rose and other factors uh, causing glyphosate prices to enter the second sowing period since uh, 2007 to 2008. So uh, when we compare the reasons for the two glyphosate price spikes in 2007 to 2008 and uh, 2020 to present, uh, we can see that there are similarities and differences. On the demand side, both uh, during the both periods of glyphosate price spikes, global food prices were both uh, at a very high price. Uh, and especially the price of glyphosate resistant GM crops such as soybeans and corn uh, rose sharply, providing sufficient downstream affordability for the price increase of glyphosate. Uh, the difference between the two price spikes uh, lies in the supply capacity and industrial concentration. Between 2007 and 2008, uh, Monsanto's production capacity was halved, uh, and China's glyphosate production at that time could not meet the export demand at that time. The glyphosate was in short supply, however, at that time, most of the glyphosate production enterprises in China had a production capacity of only 1,000 to 5,000 tons. The CR3 was only 36.8% and the CR5 was 51.5%. Uh, the industry concentration was relatively low and the competitiveness and bargaining power were weak. Therefore, as China's uh, glyphosate production capacity soared rapidly to 1 million tons in 2009, when the production capacity was severely over capacity, the price of glyphosate also began to fall rapidly. But the current round of glyphosate price spike is different from that of uh, 2007 to 2008. The competitive uh, landscape has changed completely. By 2021, the total global glyphosate production capacity reached uh, 1,122,000 tons, and there are only 11 glyphosate technical manufacturers remaining in the world. Uh, except for Bayer, all the rest of them are in China. China's glyphosate production capacity has been reduced from uh, 937,000 tons in 2017 to 752,000 tons. But the remaining capacity all comes from big enterprises because most of the outdated production capacity 
has been eliminated in several industrial recession uh, cycles and restrict environmental protection supervision. However, China's glyphosate production capacity has still accounted for 67% uh, of the world's total production capacity, and the industry's concentration has increased significantly. The top five Chinese glyphosate uh, technical manufacturers have accounted for 72.1% of the production capacity. Under such a high degree of industry concentration, the upstream and downstream bargaining power of these technical manufacturers is far better than that of 2007 to 2008. In the medium and long term, industry analysts believe that the supply and demand pattern of glyphosate will be in a tight balance. Because first of all, on the demand side, global agricultural prices, especially corn, soybean, wheat, and other prices will continue to rise, affected by multiple factors such as the COVID epidemic, international geopolitical factors, extreme weather, global monetary easing, and population growth. The increase in the price of agricultural products is conducive to enhancing farmers' enthusiasm for planting and a stronger ability to bear the price of pesticides, which is conducive to maintaining a strong pesticide price. Glyphosate, as the largest pesticide product, will also fully benefit from this. At the same time, under this influence, China's policies on GM crops, especially corn and soybeans, might also change. In the past, the growth of GM crops in China was slow. In 2019, the planting area was nearly 3.2 million hectares, accounting for only 1.7% of the global GM crop planting area, which has huge growth potential. However, China's dependence on soybean and corn imports continued to rise. In 2021, China's import dependence on soybeans and corn reached 85.9% uh, and 49.8%. Therefore, in the context of uh, global food crisis, in order to meet the growing food demand in China and ensure food security, the demand for GM crops and pesticides in China has also emerged and it is expected to further open the demand for glyphosate. On the global supply side, the Chinese government has very strict restrictions on the approval of glyphosate new production capacity increase, so it is difficult to further expand the production capacity. In addition, the Operation of buyer's factories in the United States and Brazil has been blocked for many times due to force measure, resulting in the inability to further expand the global uh, uh, glyphosate production capacity. Therefore, the industry believes that uh, in the medium and long term, the supply and demand pattern of glyphosate will be maintained in a tight balance. This also means that the current seasonal short-term price fluctuations of glyphosate will not affect the expectation that the price of glyphosate will remain in the medium and long term. All right then, this is all for today. Next time, we will talk more about the two production processes of glyphosate and the different raw materials used in the different production processes. Hope this video can help you have a new understanding of glyphosate. If you like it, please subscribe to our channel. And if you have any more questions regarding to glyphosate, please leave us a message down here below in the comment zone. And Kim Kun-san will try to provide you with more information regarding to the pesticide industry. Thanks for watching. Kim Kun-san, focus on your harvest.